I recently reviewed the Google Nest Mini. This is Google's latest smart speaker offering. You probably noticed that I've talked a lot about different Google products on my channel, but I've been thinking that it's not very fair to you to not talk about Google's greatest competition. For this, I'm going to need a little bit of help. Hey guys, Dial here from Dial Home Tech, and here I have the latest Amazon Echo Dot with a clock, and it's time for a full comparison. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where we help tech work for you. So in today's video, we're going to take the Google Nest Mini and compare it to the newest speaker by Amazon, which is the Echo Dot 3 Clock Edition. So we're gonna cover five of those topics here on my channel, and then we're going to be covering five over on Dial's channel. So you can check out that link at the end of this video. So let's get right into it, and let's first talk about the assistant that is built into these devices. So if you haven't heard, this is the Google Nest Mini. This is a smart speaker with Google Assistant built into the device. Two years ago, Google released its first generation with the Google Home Mini, and this is the second generation. So with the Google Assistant built in, that means you activate the device by using the two commands, which are either Hey Google or as you can tell, those are muted whenever I say them on video, and then you can ask Google whatever question you want. Now, there is no way to adjust those commands. Those are the only two commands that you can use to activate the speaker. To adjust the settings of the Google Home Mini, you will use the Google Home application, which you can get for Android or iOS devices. Now, Google Assistant can be accessed by many different devices. It can be used on your phone, on your Chromebook, on even your Android TV, smart TV. So there are many different ways in which you can use the Google Assistant. And one of my favorite things is Google Assistant is directly related with Google. So you can ask it pretty much anything in the world and is able to give you a response. Now, there are also many other things that are built into the Google Assistant that you can use like shopping lists and more services that we'll talk about later. Now, one really important part is that you can ask a series of questions and it can remember what you're talking about without having to repeat yourself a lot. So let me ask it a few questions. Hey Google. What year was Frozen made? Frozen came out in the United States of America on November 27th, 2013. Hey Google. How much did it make at the box office? On the website hollywoodreporter.com, they say, Frozen earned $1.28 billion globally to become the top grossing animated release of all time. So there you go. By asking a second question, I didn't need to repeat how much did Frozen make at the box office. It knew that I was talking about Frozen and then it was able to give me that second question based on that information. Now let's head over and hear about the assistant on the other device. All right, let's talk about the dot with the clock. This one is a Wi-Fi enabled speaker as well, but it also has which is Amazon's version of their voice assistant. While the Echo Dot does not have the functionality of continued conversation, it does possess the ability for you to change your wake word. So you don't have to use just one particular wake word, you can actually use a few other ones, such as Alexa, Siri, Echo, and Amazon. Amazon also has over 100,000 apps, also known as skills, that really augment the ability that you have on their voice assistant. You can do many things around the house, like controlling electronic devices, playing games, following cooking recipes, paying your bills, and even turning on your car. Ask Ram to start my truck. A command has been sent to start your black 2019 1500. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you get a much more streamlined experience when trying to order something from the Amazon store. You just simply ask Alexa to add it to your cart and order it, and it'll be in your house within two days. The voice assistant can also guard your house while you're away. You can simply say, Alexa, I'm leaving, and the device will start listening for broken glass, CO2 alarms, smoke alarms, and if you have smart lights around the house, it'll even start turning those on and off to give the impression that there's actually people inside of the house. All right, next in line, let's talk about the hardware on these little devices. Unlike the previous version of the Echo Dots, the new one with the clock now only comes in one particular color, which is the sandstone as seen on screen. However, it now boasts a bright LED display, which makes it for an even better bedside device. The LED can display the time, timers, and the temperature outside. You still have the four buttons right there at the top, 
which in my opinion is nice ease of access and a great usability factor so you don't have to kind of try to feel where things are you know that the physical button is right there and you know exactly what to press when you need to press it the Dotwood clock has four built-in microphones inside which will allow it to listen to you and understand your requests even when you're not around it it also has a 3.5 millimeter jack on the back which lets you connect via wire to a more powerful speaker if you're looking to do so. Now the Google Nest Mini features a very simple, clean design. The fabric on the Google Nest Mini was actually made of 100% recycled material. It comes in four different colors, sky, chalk, charcoal, and coral. On the device, you have touch controls where you can change the volume on the side, and in the middle, you have the option to cancel or even answer phone calls. On the back of the device, you actually have a built-in mount, so you can actually mount this pretty much wherever you would like. Inside the Mini, there are three different far-filled microphones, so it's able to hear you pretty much wherever you activate it within the room. Inside, you also have stereo pairing, so you can pair this with another mini speaker, so you have a right and left channel. If you have multiple minis within your home, you can actually group them all together in one group or even other Google Assistant speakers so that you can play sound throughout all of the home all at the same time. Speaking of sound quality, the Nest Mini offers 40% more bass than the previous Google Home Mini device. Now let's talk about what music and audio services are built into the Google Nest Mini completely hands-free. Now some of these services may vary depending on what country you are in. You can adjust all these services within the Google Home application. So first you do have free radio services. So you can use Pandora, Spotify, Google Play Music. You can even ask it to play radio from TuneIn or iHeartRadio. You can also use different premium services that you pay for like Google Play Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, Deezer, and Sirius XM Radio. Other audio services include Google Podcasts as well as audiobooks purchased from Google Books. You can also listen to the news from many different categories and services. Now the sound quality for the Dotwood clock hasn't really changed much compared to its predecessor, the third generation Dot. However, it still makes a perfect choice for a single room speaker for ambient music and casual listening. The audio quality on it has really nice mids and actually decent lows for such an affordable and portable speaker. One of the main differential for the music services supported is Apple Music. You can definitely sync up your Apple Music to your Amazon account and listen to it on your device whenever you want. You also get Amazon Music with the purchase of the device which gives you access to a decent amount of music libraries around the world. You can also purchase the Amazon Music Unlimited, which will then give you access to over 40 million tracks on any of the devices you're carrying. Other services provide are Deezer, Gimme, Sirius, Tidal, and Vivo as well. And last but not least, you can still sync up the likes of Spotify, Pandora, and listen to local radio stations using TuneIn or iHeartRadio. And if you're a podcast or audiobook fan, you can still access those services via Audible or TuneIn, AnyPod, and Stitcher. Well, Dial, that actually sounds like a pretty good list, but why don't we go ahead and do a sound test of these different devices? a bit more about the Bluetooth 5.0 that I mentioned before. So Bluetooth 5.0 is the latest you can get in Bluetooth audio. Your signal is going to be able to stretch much further and you have a higher quality sound. So with the Google Nest Mini, there are two different ways in which you can connect a Bluetooth device. So one, I can just activate the Nest Mini and I could say pair Bluetooth. I could then go into my phone, find the device, and then I can quickly pair it. This is great because even though it has a lot of services built in, you can't use every service. Like if I wanna use Audible that the competitor has, I would need to pull out my phone, pair through Bluetooth, and then I can listen to my audiobooks right on the Nest Mini. Now the other way to use Bluetooth is if you already have a Bluetooth speaker, you can actually play the music that the Nest Mini would play right to the Bluetooth speaker. You are able to pair this up through the Google Home application. You just put the speaker in pairing mode, go into the setting, and then you can pair them up. So now whenever you play music from your Google Assistant, it's going to be coming out of the Bluetooth speaker. Anytime the Google Assistant talks, it will be coming out of the Nest Mini. Now let's see how audio works 
on the Echo Dot. Now for Bluetooth technology on the Dotwood clock, not much has changed since last year. And it also boasts the same functionalities as the Nest Mini, letting you connect to a mobile device to stream your music or have it connected to a larger speaker to get much better quality of music around you. Now let's move on to the fifth topic in comparing these two devices, which is communication. Now we all know how much mobile phones change the way that we communicate with each other. Well now with this new device, without a screen, you are able to communicate in some pretty amazing ways. So let's talk about the four ways in which the Nest Mini can communicate. Now, first up, we have what is called broadcast. So broadcast allows me to send a message to any other Google Assistant devices that I have within my home. So if I say, hey, Google. broadcast, is it snowing outside? Okay, broadcasting is now. Outside? Is it snowing outside? That message is then going to be sent to all the other Google Assistant speakers that I have within my home. So on the other end, they could activate Google hit reply, and then it could send a message back to me through the different speakers within a home. No. No. And there you go. I guess we have our answer. So the second way to communicate with the Nest Mini is to call other devices that you have within your own home. So here I have the Nest Mini and here I have the Lenovo Smart Display. So I'm gonna call that device. Call Lenovo Smart Display. Making an audio call to Lenovo Smart Display on Duo. I guess I better get that. It's from Brett Bristow. Hello? 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 Ah. Now the third way to communicate is to make a Google Duo call. So this is great because you can do this to pretty much anyone in the world as long as you have set up Google Duo with your phone number and they have set up Google Duo as well. Hey Google. Call Dial. Making an audio call to Dialpex on Duo. I guess he's busy trying to show the cool parts about that other device. And the fourth way to communicate with your Nest device is to call phone numbers, like actual phone numbers that you dial out. So if you live in the US or Canada, you can call phone numbers between those two countries just by saying the phone number. You can also call businesses by asking the Google Assistant to call specific businesses. If you live in the UK, you can also do the same within the UK. Other countries for this calling really isn't supported, so if you wanna call other people, make sure you are using the Google Duo service. The Dotwood clock can make announcements around your house if you have other Amazon devices, just making it for a very simple and efficient use of your own local intercom system. Dinner is ready. You can also ask to call a physical number in the US, Mexico or Canada, as well as the UK. Echo Connect also allows you to send text messages by voice using your Dotwood Clock device. By simply saying that you want to send a message and dictating to your Dotwood Clock, it'll pick up the message and deliver it to your desired recipient. And last but not least, you can use a feature called Drop-In, which lets you to either inside of the house or remotely using your Alexa app to drop in on any of your Amazon Echo devices within your house. Those are some pretty cool features. So, so far we've covered the five main function of these two different smart speakers. So Dial, I wanna know, what is one feature that you're missing out on not having a Nest Mini? Um, I actually believe that the continued conversation is such a game changer when it comes to AI and smart voice assistants. The ability to talk to your assistant, continuing that line of thought without having to spit out wake words is actually something really, really nice. And I really hope that Amazon can get there sooner rather than later. Now, what about you, Brett? What would you like to see added to the Nest Mini? Hmm. I definitely say that the drop-in feature is the best part about the Amazon smart speaker ecosystem and something that I would really like to see added into Google. Now you can do something like that with the brand new Nest Hub Max. So those are the five beginning features compared between the two devices. If you wanna see five more features that can enhance what these devices can do, we've actually prepared a second video that you can check out over on Dial's channel right over there on the side. So thanks so much for watching here and we'll see you over there. Until next time, I'm Dial.